Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms 39, verse 6 through 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this word. Thank you for keeping us, strengthening us, and giving us wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless this word. Let it blossom in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right, Psalms 39, verse 6. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. All right, so this is basically just talking about, um, it kind of reminds you of Ecclesiastes a little bit, <laughs> but um, uh, this one is just basically kind of just letting us know that man's life is kind of like a vapor, like we've already talked about and how it's short. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. It's like the grass, right? It says, surely man goes about as a shadow, surely for nothing. They are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. So he, it, the, the, the actual existence of the man is, is like a shadow, right? So meaning that it, it does not even truly exist, right? In the sense of it, its purposes and its ability are here and gone, right? So it says, surely for nothing, they are in turmoil. So for what reason is man, you know, distressing himself if he's here for such a short time and then gone? Why would he put himself through crazy strains, right? If he, if he's only going to be here for a short and appointed time. So it says man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. They have, man has no control over what happens to him. Truly, you know, we can put our wishes down. We can get the best estate attorney and all of that stuff. But honestly, once you're gone, it's subject to whoever handles it, right? It's subject to whoever gathers it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that's out of man's control, right? He He can only do so much. He can do his best to try to get the right people in the right places and, you know, try to align things before his death but either way he's still only able to you know do so much so it says in verse seven and now oh lord for what do i wait my hope is in you so i mean it's as simple as that if i have no control if i have no true ability to do much of anything then all i can do is say my hope is in the lord right all I can do is, is put my trust in him and step back from that thing, right? Because he is the only one that we have in heaven. It's, it's the Lord. It, he is the only one who can see outside of our timeline. All right, let's keep going. Verse eight, deliver me from all my transgression, transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. And this part kind of reminds me of, that part where David was saying, um, the, the drunkards are making songs about me. Um, it says, deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. So, um, he, he's admitting transgression, right? He's admitting sin. We've all sinned. Um, one of the best things that you can do when dealing with the Lord is to admit that you even have sin, you know, um, going about, acting as if you don't have sin is part of the biggest part of the problem, you know, denying that there's a problem at all. So it says, deliver me from all my transgressions, meaning to take me out of that. Let me not live in that pathway. Let me not walk in that way anymore. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool, right? We don't want the fool, the person who's unwise, the person who is clearly unable to make the right decision. Um, they're looking at me 
as if, oh, look, God is punishing this person, right? They've done wrong. They they are not smart either. You know, you don't want to be the laughing stock from the folks who are the laughing stock, right? So it says, do not make me the scorn of the fool. Verse nine, I am mute. I do not open my mouth for it is you who have done it. So it, he's saying at this point, you know, as it relates to his transgressions and his life and his lifestyle and what, what's going on, he's saying, I don't have anything to say, right? This is God's hand. This is God's hand on my life and good, bad in between, you know, I have to admit that this is God. I can't, I can't get away from that. Right. Because if if you know it was your transgression, then you kind of have to ask for forgiveness and wait for God to remove his hand. Right. Or move his hand. So it says, I am mute. He, he has nothing. He can't speak. He can't hear. He, he, it is what it is at this point. It says, I don't open my mouth. He's not going to speak on that thing. It says, for it is you who have done it. So he knows it's God who allowed the situation to happen. Remember, when you're going through things, it doesn't matter how horrible the situation is. If it's happened to you, God is is making it um, go through you, right? He is He is helping you to come out of it. He's helping your character to be built. He's helping you to grow in him, right? So if he allowed it to come to you, it had to come through him first. So yeah, let's keep going. Verse 10, remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. So he's saying at at that point, you know, at first he was saying he's not going to say anything, but he's saying remove the stroke from me, right? This, this affliction, whatever it is that he's going through physically, um, remove your stroke from me, remove that, that burden, that part of it. Um, I am spent by the hostility of your hand. Um, he he's just it seems as if he's really to the end of of what he can take physically. Um, so it says when you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume him like a moth. What is dear to him? You consume like a moth what is dear to him. So when you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. So he's saying that um, as he is being punished for this transgression that he was talking about, he's saying that it's it's almost eating away at him, right? The things that are dear, most dear to him. It, basically his physical health, which he's mentioning multiple times. Um, and, and just in general, um, his closeness to God, right. It says surely man goes out about as a shadow. Um, this part about the, um, no one man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. So in other words, in that sense, from the beginning, he, he felt like, you know, he could die at any moment and, and it was God's will, right? It was in God's hand, right? When, when God is disciplining him and, and taking away the things that are most dear, his own life is the most dear. His own life is something that is precious and he feels like it's t- being taken from him and all of his things and all of his life and his wealth and the things that he's built up in his life are going to be in charge by someone else, right? Um, He knows he can't take it with him. And he says that his hope is still in God, which that's the most important thing, right? He, He knows that he sinned. He knows that he walked in the wrong way. And he knows that God's hand is on him for it. But he also knows that his hope is in God. It says, when you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. And so, and I mean, who else but David could say things like that truly? I mean, um, he he lost his son, you know, he lost a son just due to his sin and he lost a son, you know, trying to take his throne, right? And and just imagine the grief of of having to have your own son killed because, you know, he was, 
he didn't have him killed, but the men, they killed him, but um, for trying to take his throne, right? And it being on the run from your son, right? So it says, when you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth. What is dear to him? Literally, David's life was being consumed like a moth, like the things around him that were precious to him were being taken away. And everyone in life has had moments when we feel like the precious things in life um, sometimes can get taken away, right? They can get um, killed, removed by death, um, just marriage, just broken up, you know, things that you thought would never, you know, fall apart. Sometimes it happens, right? And, And yet God is our hope. Just like with David, God is our hope. He is the one who is in charge of everything. He's sovereign. He sees you. You're his child. Call out to him, right? Ask him to remove his hand, remove the stroke from you, right? Because God can see and he knows and he has his Holy Spirit who is leading and guiding us into all truth and we are going to make it, right? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for hope in you. We hope in your mercy. We know you are close by. We hope in your mercy. We hope your mercy is great and grand towards us. Wash us clean. Present us faultless. Wash us with the water of your word, Lord God. Cover us with your blood, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you for your presence. We give you glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.